This is the most futuristic subway I've ever seen. While in California visiting my brother, I decided to go to a subway nearby, and to my surprise, this was one of the nicest subways I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm really hoping that in the near future, we're going to be able to do something very similar to this at my subway. I have a theory about white Gatorade. It's called Glacier Cherry, so my theory is that if I mix this Gatorade with snow, that it'll actually taste a lot better. So I took a spoonful of clean snow from my backyard and I mixed the two and tried it. And I want to be 100% honest with you guys, I didn't taste any difference, but it was still fun to try. This is the weirdest snack I've ever made. They're called cookies and cream cookies. And basically what they are is two chocolate cookies with cream in between. So literally cookies and cream. Honestly, I picked this up from the supermarket because it was extremely colorful. And based off of the first look, I was like, man, these have to be delicious. And well, they were. The vanilla frosting in between two chocolate cookies was just so good. And the fact that there were sprinkles and Oreo cookie crumbs on it, that was like the cherry on top. Would you guys eat a pickle pizza? This is from the youth fair in Miami, Florida. Pineapples on pizza. Okay, pickles on pizza, uh, I don't know about that. Only $100? Subway is broke. A lot of people were clowning on the fact that Subway gave me a $100 gold card. People were saying they should have given me a lot more. And the comments were just extremely negative in general. But I mean, like, I was grateful. Subway doesn't really have to give me anything at all. And if you keep thinking to yourself something like only $100 or trying to find the negative in everything, well, that's a dangerous pattern to fall into. What is one thing you don't like about your job? Making salad. The average time of making a sandwich is somewhere from two to three minutes, while the average time of making a salad is somewhere from five to eight minutes. You wouldn't think this is the case because you just have to throw things together in a salad, right? But at Subway, we have to chop up all the ingredients. And well, that takes some time, especially if you're alone and you're dealing with a line. Salads are one of the most annoying things to make. How much for one of everything at Subway? I actually made a full length video about this a few months ago where I went to a random Subway and ordered one of everything. The full cost came out to $901.79. And no, I didn't end up eating one of everything on the menu. What would you do if someone stole another person's sandwich? Well, honestly, I would probably have no idea what to do. It's not like I'm John Wick. I'm not going to hunt somebody down just because they stole a sandwich. So I would probably end up feeling bad for whoever got their sandwich stolen to make them a new one. It's one of those weird things where it's not like a major crime where you can't take it to the police or anything, but it's that petty enough of a crime where it just infuriates you. So my honest answer is I'd probably just get over it. Malad, what's the best food you can make besides sandwiches? Well, I would say steak, but we all know how that went. I wouldn't consider myself a master chef at all, but I do like to cook. Now, I must admit, I'm not good at cooking anything besides sandwiches, but I really want to try and I really want to become better at making food for myself because eating at home is a lot more powerful than eating out. So I'd love to hear suggestions for what you guys think I should try making and whether or not you guys would like to see me make more cooking videos. I used to love snow growing up, and now as an adult, well, I wouldn't say I really love it anymore. It's a pretty cool thing, and for a lot of people in the South that have never experienced snow, they probably think it's something that's really, really cool to experience. And you know, I would agree, except for when you have to shovel the snow. I would honestly love for it to snow every single day if it wasn't for having to shovel. As a kid, mushrooms used to scare me to the point where I wouldn't even touch one. But now as an adult, I realize how much of a foundational food that mushrooms truly are. I helped my mom prepare some pasta, and I don't really know anything about pasta, but I do know that she puts mushroom in this pasta sauce. And well, this is now my favorite pasta. So thank you, mom, for helping me get over my fear of mushrooms. Mr. Beast Burger is extremely underrated. For only being around for a little over a year, it's insanely shocking how they could deliver to almost anywhere in the United States. My family and I had it delivered and it was insanely fresh and delicious. Mommy, what's your favorite name to be called? So over the last like eight months, I've had my audience calling me different names because of how hard it is to pronounce my name, which is Malad. I bet some of you didn't even know that. And this is nothing new. I mean, literally since my birth, I've been called weird names. Like the substitute teacher would literally call me every single name in the book. But the one that has always stuck with me throughout my entire life is Millard. And it's funny because it's not even like anywhere near how you actually say my name, but it's just so fun to say. Try it with me out loud right now. Just say it. Millard. Let's make waffles from Parks and Rec. I was born ready. We start with our waffle mix. Add an egg, pour cold water, and whisk. Waffle, whipped cream, sweet maple syrup, and the cherry on top. Look at that, it's waffles. Wow, I'm feeling pretty presidential. Let's make a Krabby Patty. SpongeBob was my favorite show growing up. <laughs> We start with our bun. SpongeBob's creator said that the Krabby Patty contains no real meat, so we use an Impossible Burger. Add our Krabby Patty, add lettuce, cheese, onions, tomato, ketchup, mustard, sea pickles, and a top bun. There it is. Cheers. I thought of something funnier than 2445. Wow, this is delicious. Really, really, really? Yes! Yes! 
already Mr. Krabs sure isn't gonna be happy about this one, but my thoughts on Jared from Subway. I believe Jared from Subway single-handedly ruined the entire Subway brand. This may be a bold take, but I think without Jared from Subway, Subway would probably be one of the highest earning fast food chains across the world. But I genuinely think that this man literally ruined the name of Subway and turned so many people off from ever eating Subway again. Hey, Malad, you're really a gentleman for giving all those free cookies out. That's pretty heartwarming, thank you. But I honestly don't think it's too big of a deal that we give out free cookies. It's kind of just like a little I love you to the customer to remind them how much, well, we love them. They would lose so much money if you were CEO for one day. Well, that hurts. But yeah, they definitely would. My first order as CEO would 100% be to give every sandwich that somebody orders a free cookie. And I'm pretty sure that decision alone would probably bankrupt all of Subway. But the customers need free cookies. It kind of hurts me, though, that you think that I would instantly fail as a CEO of Subway. I mean, you're not wrong, but like, at least believe in me. What happens if somebody's card declines? Well, if I make somebody a sandwich and when I go to ring them up, their card declines, it's really simple what we do. We'll just take the sandwich back apart and act as if nothing ever really happened. And if they really want the sandwich that badly, well, then I'll just hand them a mop and they can get to work. A lot of you guys have been asking me recently what happened to buying the subway. And over the past few months, I've kind of been working on trying to figure out how to go about doing this. And to be 100% honest with you guys, I've decided that I don't think it's the best idea to buy my parents' subway. I realized how much of a commitment that it really is to own and operate a subway. I'm really sorry to my audience because I told you guys a couple months ago that I was going to buy it. And I should have never put out that video without being 100% certain that I was going to do it. So I don't really know what I can do but say sorry. In the future, I'm going to try my best not to ever put out videos without actually meaning what I'm going to say. I feel really bad. I made Italian cookies for my family, but I messed up somewhere along the way. Italian cookies aren't like normal cookies. They're more like a sugar cookie that's Italian. But I might have not added enough baking soda or put too much flour or something. Because when I bit into it, it was just very, very doughy. But other than that, they were delicious. Has anyone ever said, but I want two cookies? So there was a mom that came into the subway once that I offered a free cookie to. And she told me, well, if you give me a free cookie, you got to give one to my daughter. So I was like, okay, fair enough. So I gave one to her daughter. And she was like, well, if you're giving one to my daughter, then you have to give one to my son. So at this point, I gave her three free cookies and I felt scammed. I am not Subway. As obvious as this may sound, I've quickly learned that not everything on the internet is so obvious. Recently, I've been getting dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of comments and DMs about people's experiences that were negative at Subway. And I just have to say one thing. I am not Subway. I am not the reason that the tuna scandal happened. I am not the reason that your 12-inch sandwich was 11 inches. I'm just a man that started making YouTube videos at Subway. Never expected any of this to happen. But I am not a multi-billion dollar global corporation. How would $5 footlongs drive subways out of business when you would sell way more if they were five dollars well wave side we simply wouldn't be making a profit on any sandwiches if they were five dollars it doesn't matter if we'd sell a thousand more sandwiches we would literally be losing thousands of dollars so if the cost of sandwich ingredients for each sub was like average below five dollars i'd understand but it's above five dollars so we would literally lose money if we did five dollar footlongs Will Subway ever bring back the $5 foot long? To be honest, probably not. The $5 foot long was introduced in 2008, and the value of $5 from 2008 to 2022 is about $6.47 today. Now, a $1.47 increase might not seem like much on the surface, but this is a 29.4% inflation of the dollar. If $5 foot longs ever did make a return, it might just drive the rest of the subways that exist out of business. How to get free Subway. There are two different methods to go about getting yourself a free Subway sandwich. The first method is to download the Subway app and every time you buy a sandwich, just scan the app. And the second way is to just rob your local Subway. How do you feel having the same job as the yodeling Walmart kid? So if you didn't know, the kid that went viral a few years back for yodeling in Walmart now works at a Subway. And while honestly, I think this is the single greatest thing that's ever happened in Subway history. He seems like a pretty stand-up kid and good on his parents for making him work a job while he's young. And he actually released a song that's now going pretty viral while working at Subway. Pretty impressive if you ask me. What is your favorite cookie at Subway, my lord? I used to be the biggest fan of the carrot cake cookie when that was a thing. It was so gooey and it had this incredible cheesecake icing on it. But that cookie hasn't been around for a few years now, so a close second is the caramel brownie cookie that's out right now. How do you spell Fruit Loops? Well, if you say it's F-R-U-I-T, just like a normal fruit, you would be wrong. But don't worry, so are a lot of people. So many that a lot of them actually truly believe that the original spelling of Fruit Loops is F-R-U-I-T, when in reality, it's F-R-O-O-T. This is just one example of the Mandela Effect, where people claim that the past actually changed, and well, we live in an alternate universe now.
What's the funniest sub you've ever made? These two kids a couple months back came into the store and they asked me to make a foot long Italian sandwich. And when I went to ask what they want on it, they literally said one pickle. So I put a pickle on it, wrapped it up and gave it to them. Too bad it still costed like $6. What's the first item you'd remove from Subway? Right now it would 100% be the fresh mozzarella cheese. I have no idea why we have two mozzarella cheeses. And if I'm being honest, we don't even really sell the fresh mozzarella anymore. So half the time we just have to throw it out. How much of a discount do you get? Every single subway is different my subway we give a 20 percent discount on all items to employees and i also gave all of my employees a gift card so they could just use that to buy whatever they want and well also chips cookies and drinks are free for our employees it's just the sandwiches that they have to pay for this honestly isn't my decision at all i don't own the subway it's been this way for years Let's make the death sandwich from the regular show. Whoa. First, we slice in half our Italian bread. Next, we spread marinara sauce. And then we gotta throw on some ham, meat slap, and finally some meatballs, two at once. Wow. And we finish this off with our top bun. And remember, eat it right or you die. Let's see if I die. I feel completely fine. I actually feel great. <laughs> So while I was at the mall, I saw an ice cream vending machine for the first time in my entire life. You literally touch a screen and select what you want and a robot inside of the vending machine makes ice cream for you. But this robot messed up my order. On the screen, I clicked strawberry syrup and it came out as caramel syrup in the end. So basically a robot had messed up my order and I had nobody to complain to. Starbucks spells names wrong on purpose. There's this theory that every single time Starbucks spells a name wrong on their cups, it's done completely on purpose. We've all seen the very simple names like Sarah or Courtney get spelled completely wrong. And a lot of people really believe that Starbucks employees do this because it's free marketing. People will take a picture of their cup and throw it onto social media, making more people see the Starbucks brand and maybe even go into Starbucks to see if their name gets spelled wrong. Now, this conspiracy theory may be way out there and I'm going to admit, I don't really believe it. But if this is true, what a genius strategy by Starbucks. Why are there so many stems in my Subway sandwich? A couple years ago, YouTuber Gus Johnson performed an experiment where he bought 25 Subway sandwiches and found that in 95% of them where he ordered jalapenos, there was a stem. If I didn't take off every individual stem that goes on a Subway sandwich, I believe that every single sandwich that I make that has jalapenos or banana peppers would have at least one stem in them. So the question is really why? Well, it's most likely that when the jalapenos and banana peppers are cut, they're cut by a machine and the machine fails to take out the stems when they need to. So Subway's kind of just relying on the workers to take them out. But in reality, a lot of workers are not getting paid enough to take out every single individual stem that goes on a sandwich. You will never eat a Subway sandwich the same way again after seeing this. I read a comment somewhere that every single time somebody makes a Subway sandwich, they're actually making the sandwich wrong. So I sat there and I really thought about it before my mind actually blew up. How has nobody noticed that Subway has been making their sandwiches the wrong way this entire time? It's day three of your new job at Subway, and today we're going to teach you how to properly prepare a sandwich. So now that you've washed your hands and put your paper on the line, you're going to take your sandwich and you're just going to cut through halfway in the middle. If they want a foot long, keep it a foot long, but if they want a six inch, then you want to cut the sandwich right in half. And then you're going to use your two hands to open up the sandwich and start to place your meats, veggies, and sauces onto it. Come back tomorrow and we'll get real technical about how to handle the meat. Welcome back. It's day two of your training at Subway. Yesterday, you learned how important it is to wash your hands. Today, I'm going to prep you to make your first sandwich ever. So every single sandwich that you have to make, you have to put on gloves and put a paper onto the line. So once you have your gloves on and you have your paper on the line, you're going to go ahead and grab yourself a roll. Come back tomorrow and we're going to make your first sandwich. Have you ever found a coworker or yourself sleeping on the job? Once when I was in high school, after a very long day, I went to work. And this was back at the old Subway, which was always usually dead. So I never really had customers customers late at night and I fell asleep while sitting down in my chair and all of a sudden I woke up from the sound of a ding from a bell that we have in the front and I immediately apologized to the customer and we both had a good laugh about it. Buy a cookie from the futuristic Subway using the gold card. In case you didn't know, like six months ago, Subway sent me a gold card, which is basically just a $100 gift card. But I basically carried this thing around with me everywhere I go. It's been to Dubai, it's been to California, it's been to Hawaii, it's been everywhere. Let's make butterbeer from Harry Potter. We start off with cream soda and vanilla ice cream. And then we add ice cream soda, caramel, and of course our butter extract. And we mix it all together and we top it off with some whipped cream. You're a wizard, Harry. This honestly looked gross to me, but after trying it, it was insanely delicious. What's the best sauce combination at Subway? In my opinion, the best combination of sauces that you get at Subway or just in general is sweet onion and chipotle sauce. It kind of reminds me of a sweet and sour sauce that has an extra little kick to it. When you ask for extra mayo at Subway. Yeah. Turn me up. Turn me up,
If I was the CEO of Subway, I would add one sandwich to the menu right now. This is a sandwich that is so popular that world-renowned chef Gordon Ramsay has literally talked about and made this sandwich so many times. The sandwich in question is the idiot sandwich. Has anybody tried breaking in before? One night when I was closing up the shop, I was putting everything away and all of a sudden I saw somebody come up to the door and on the inside of the restaurant, we have a bolt lock because sometimes the actual lock won't work and the bolt lock was the only thing preventing the person from coming into the store and the person pulled the door a little too hard and the bolt lock actually broke. The guy basically walked in and was like, wait, are you guys closed? And I was like, I mean, yeah, all the lights are off and everything's away. And he was like, oh, my bad. Jersey Mike's is better than Subway. What do you want me to say to this? Because you've commented this on literally every single one of my posts for the past like 25 posts so here's your sliver of attention i'm not even thinking about what's better than what i literally just work at subway and film my life okay i'm done screaming now these two college students got the opportunity to play rock paper scissors for one thousand dollars this was in front of a packed stadium and that was probably the easiest thousand dollars he's ever made this is a 500 hundred dollar subway gold card that i bought myself and i'm gonna be giving it to my co-worker will so let's see his reaction yo will i got something for it this is a $500 Subway Golds card. And this is, oh my God, it won't open. But this is yours, all right? Are you serious? Yeah. It's 500 bucks on it, then. Damn. Nice, bro. Of course. Now go enjoy some sandwiches. Right. Subway is the largest food chain in the world. Say what you will about the quality of Subway or the fact that you're buying a sandwich, but Subway is clearly doing something right if they're beating out companies like McDonald's, Starbucks, and literally every other food company. When I first heard the statistic, I was shocked. But as of right now, nobody really knows what the future of Subway looks like. As close to 2,400 Subway locations, including my parents' old Subway, closed in 2020. A decade from now, who knows whether or not this will still be the case. What would you do if a customer who was giving you attitude dropped their sandwich? So if they dropped a sandwich that was still wrapped, I'd do literally nothing because, well, your sandwich isn't infected at all. But if they dropped their bare sandwich on the ground, and even if they gave me an attitude, I'd probably feel bad. And, well, I'd probably tell them to throw out that sandwich and take another one for free. When are you going to be in a Subway ad? Reese, I'm asking the same thing. I honestly don't think Subway will ever put me in one of their ads. I'm not a D1 athlete, and I'm not an NBA player like Steph Curry or Tom Brady. But maybe, just maybe, one day... I will be able to be in one ad but at the same time I don't want you guys thinking that I'm conspiring with Subway because for some reason a lot of you guys like me because I'm not paid and I give a very unbiased opinion about everything except for the fact that Subway is the greatest sandwich franchise on the face of the planet please Subway if you're listening put me in an ad how come the flatitza isn't served in the West Coast? I mean, honestly, I have no idea why your Subway wouldn't give you a flatitza. If they have flatbread and they have meatballs and it's purely out of pettiness or by choice, I mean, every Subway is different and different ones have different protocols. But a flatitza is literally just a piece of flatbread, marinara sauce, and cheese. So I guess if they're denying making the flatitza for you, you could just ask them, can I get a flatbread with marinara sauce and cheese? That'll probably do the trick. What was your most wholesome moment when working at Subway? I once had a kid by the name of Amir come into the store who told me that he watches all of my videos, which is extremely extremely impressive because I have over a thousand videos and he brought in two matching Milad Merg shirts for me. Will Subway bring back the pastrami? I have no idea. I'm not Subway, so I can't tell whether or not they'll ever bring any items back. But I will say the pastrami was extremely good, but we never really sold any when we had it. So if I was CEO of Subway, probably not. But who knows? They could bring it back tomorrow. When will you be the CEO of Subway? Probably never. I mean, let's be real. The CEO of a massive corporation like this has to be some kind of like 50 or 60 year old. But this is an open invitation to Subway. If you made me CEO for one day, I literally think the video would go so viral. And Subway, I know you're watching this. So what do you say? Once I made a steak that upset millions of people. A few months back, I made a video of me trying to make a steak. And instead of using a cast iron skillet, I ended up using a pan. And oh boy, the comments were infuriated. I quickly learned how much of an art making steak truly is. So when this Frenchman came into my restaurant and asked for his steak to be well done. I mean, I lost it at that point. This robot had some nerve. I became a boxer in a VR world. Honestly, it's pretty fun. I got this VR headset last week, and the first thing that I started doing on it was play the boxing game. And some of y'all told me I'm built like a Roblox character, so it's actually a pretty good at-home workout while gaming. I think in the future, I'm going to start posting a lot more VR content, so stay tuned. What headset do you use, Millard? I have a Quest 2. Well, Saran, I also have a Quest 2, but I don't think that's by choice. I feel like I don't really have any other really good options. It's just the easiest one to use and record on, in my opinion. These are blue and green cherries. Yes, you heard that right. Blue and 
and green cherries. I never knew that these existed until somebody DM'd me and said that I need to try blue and green cherries. And I also ordered a jar of yellow cherries, but they never came in the mail, so maybe I got scammed. But these things blew my mind. I never knew that these existed. But then after trying them, something was a little fishy. I honestly think that they just took Marciano cherries and dipped them into food coloring because it literally just tastes like a cherry that's been drenched in food coloring. A few months back, I went to In-N-Out and told everybody that I thought it was overrated, but today I have completely changed my opinion. I ordered animal style fries and an animal style burger, and I can say this has to be the best fast food burger I've ever had in my entire life. Also, shout out to Roberto. He was a subscriber that helped me with my order at In-N-Out. Did you know that Subway wasn't even originally called Subway? Back in 1965, when the first franchise was ever created, the company was called Pete's Super Submarines. 37,540 locations later, the name we all know is Subway. But my question is, why do they make this name change? I mean, Pete Subs does sound kind of cool. Did you know that you could order a pizza from Subway? To this day, people still get shocked that I tell them that you could get pizza at your local Subway. And I'm going to be honest, it's no New York premium slice. But the reason that I like Subway Subway's pizza so much is that you can literally put whatever you want onto it.